Hey there. All right. Today I want to talk about a must have for your Konica collection. Uh, if you are building a collection uh, based on the Auto Reflex series cameras, as I have recommended, then uh, you're going to want, want some nice um, Hexanon lenses, which are um, equal in quality to Nikors and Takamars, at least in the opinions of many people. So, um, in the 200 millimeter focal length, Konica made four lenses. Uh, one which predated this one, uh, which was made for the, uh, the earlier um, preset. It was a preset lens made for the earlier lens mount. I think the earlier lens mount. Anyway, um, it is a 200 millimeter f3.5, but it looks very different than this one. Um, and um, it, you can distinguish it by the lack of the AE or EE marking here. Um, and also the fact that it goes up to 22, whereas this one only goes to 16. So um, this is the 200 millimeter f3.5 made for the AR system, uh, which includes the um, which includes a setting for automatic exposure here. On an earlier version, it said EE as opposed to AE. That's electric eye versus automatic exposure. Um, and there were a couple of other 200 millimeter lenses made or marketed at least by Konica, the Hexar. Uh, 200 millimeter f4 and the later Hexanon 200 millimeter f4, both of which are considered optically inferior to this. I will link it down below to the web page, which, to my knowledge, contains the most information online about this lens. If you know of another one, please drop a comment and leave a link. Um, so the disadvantage of this lens, it's uh, it is not small. It's uh, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a nice hefty. Uh, package here, uh, but it does has a, have a maximum aperture of f3.5 at 200 millimeters, and that's that's fairly significant. If we compare it in size, you can see that it is significantly larger than the uh, Nikkor 200 millimeter f4. Um, and again, that's largely because of its larger um, uh, maximum aperture of f3.5. The um, the Hexanon is remarkably sharp. I've shot about four or five rolls of film with it lately. Uh, and I've put those images up on Flickr, and I will link to that down below as well. I shot two rolls of film at a local park, um, which is known for um, its large duck populations, so I got uh, some nice duck shots. Those were taken with um, um, Ilford Pan uh, 400 at an exposure index of 320, developed in Perceptol, one of my personal favorite combinations, and those images were shot at aperture values between 5, 6, and 8 uh, for Sunny 16 at that, um, with that film developer combination. I find that the intermediate mark between 5, 6, and 8 um, at a shutter speed of 1, 1,000th where it works perfect in bright sunlight. Um, I also took a, um, uh, I recently participated in a, in a um, portraiture workshop where I took this lens and um, I shot some outdoor portraits uh, at maximum aperture. Um, on foam pan 100 developed in perceptol at box speed um, and uh, those are on the um, those are on the flicker as well um, so this is not a small lens it uh, comes with a, uh, a, let's say a metal lens cap excuse me there you go there's your metal lens cap built-in lens hood retractable um, and a 67 millimeter filter size, which is not small. Um, if you're buying this lens for, um, for mirrorless, then you'll need to get, well, you won't need to get, but I would recommend a polarizing filter. I, I just, I think polarizing filters are extremely useful, especially if you shoot outdoors in bright sunlight. I think they're absolutely, nece absolutely necessary. Um, if you're shooting mirrorless, you should probably get a circular polarizing filter. That is a, a newer um, kind of polarizing filter um, because of the it's either a, uh, the, the old linear style polarizing filters apparently interfere with the um, either the auto exposure or the autofocus. I can't remember which. Um, but if you're just using for film, then you can get uh, like an old Vivitar like this. It's an old 60. This is a 67 millimeter um, filter size. Uh, polarizing filter from Vivitar, and you can find these things on eBay for you know not much money. So uh, because but they but again these are not CPLs. This is the old linear polarizer which you cannot use on modern uh, digital cameras, or else it'll throw off. It's either the auto exposure or the autofocus, if not both. Um, 
but I have enjoyed this uh, lens quite a bit. Um, it balances rather nicely with the, um, with the T2. Um, it's a little front heavy on the TC, but um, um, it's got a nice, it's nicely damped. My own, one of my few complaints is that it only closes down to 16, which is unusual in a lens of this focal length. Uh, normally, on a, on a telephoto lens that um, you know that only opens up to 3.5, will close down to 22, if not 32. Um, but because this lens was produced by Konica at a time when the auto reflex cameras could only control aperture down to f16, they just didn't bother um, adding in an, uh, f22 or f32 for uh, for these lenses, and that's that's. Uh, Anyway, well, it just it is what it is. But it kind of makes me wonder at uh, at which point do you get diffraction? I mean, do you do you really get diffraction problems at f16 here, or would it be physically possible to like add in another you know f stop if you know, if only um, the um, you know the auto exposure system would have justified it? Um, I don't know. Just wondering. So um, my recommendation is get one of these. They are not expensive. You can find these things in really nice condition for well under $100, closer to $50 actually. Um, uh, even in the European market, um, uh, camera stores listed. I, I might have bought this thing from camera store, I can't remember. Um, but, um, but they're going for well under 100 euro, um, even on camera store site, uh, if I recall correctly. I, I didn't check before I did this video, but um, these are not expensive lenses and the quality is phenomenal. The bokeh is fantastic. It's not perfect. If you take a look at the photos I shot, uh, the bokeh is, it's good uh, in some places. It's great, and in other places, it's you know acceptable. So um, uh, so take a look at it and make make your own decision. But it definitely blur, uh, blurs the background. It will most definitely blur your background wide open. That is for for dog on shore, and the the central sharpness is is um, good enough to be shooting uh, you know portraits uh, wide open at three five with uh, with nice background blur. And frankly, in order to beat that kind of blur, you're going to have to invest in probably a 70 to 210 zoom lens with a constant aperture of f2.8 and those things are not cheap. Um, so this is a nice, very affordable, high quality alternative to something like that. Um, okay, just a few of my thoughts on the Konica Hexanon AR 200mm f3.5. Highly recommend it. Um, if you're investing in a Konica system, this is a must have. It is an absolute must have. Um, it's, it's one of their stellar performers and it's um, a very inexpensive. Um, in terms of, you know, Konica must-haves, this is right up there with, say, the 51.7 or the 41.8. Um, your, your Hexanon collection is just incomplete without one of these, really. Um, okay, so those are my thoughts for the day. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please subscribe and check out the links below. Thank you so much. Glad to have you along. Take care. Bye-bye.